All right, all right, all right. Push the button. Mm. Mm. Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, some real good go. video gaming, friends. We did it. We're live. Okay. <sighs> Ready? 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 Yeah. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Ready? 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 Hello and welcome to episode 686 of the Player One Podcast for Tuesday, December 31st, 2019. I'm your host, Chris Johnston, and with me in the same clothes that we were wearing last week at this time, Mr. Greg Seward. To be fair, I have like four shirts that I just wear over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> and same. joining me from the great state of Washington, also in his uh, same shirt. And boy, is it stinky. Mr. Filthy Abald. I, I actually should have changed shirts. That would have been a <laughs> in, good in idea. between that recording been, sessions. That would have been just, funny. Just for fun. <laughs> yeah, of course, we're pre recording this, but uh, how about that Mandalorian finale, huh? How Man. about that? I didn't oh. even see that coming. My gosh. When uh, uh, Darth <laughs> Vader showed up, I know. And said, Who knew that baby was an Ewok? That was yeah. weird. Yeah. Was weird. It was really wicked like cool or awesome or like wicked cool like wicked wicked the the ewok that's wizard annie (laughs) anyway uh thank you for joining us uh if you haven't listened to last week you might want to do that because this is a continuation this is a part two Mm -hmm. numero dos uh, numero dos of our games of the decade series that's uh two episodes that we're doing here on our favorite games yes of the decade it doesn't mean of course the top selling games of the yes, decade. it, it means the like best that. games period it means it means our favorite games yeah of the decade mm-hmm. and they should be your favorite games they should be <clears throat> they are our favorites be. they, they should are be yours our favorites too. they should be yours too but if they're not that's that's understandable too is it well mm. i don't know um and i guess we'll kick this off uh-huh with a look back at the year oh. 2015 in the <laughs> Player One podcast, <laughs> things, some of the things we talked about mm. or that happened. Uh, Club Nintendo was discontinued. I miss Club Nintendo. Yeah, Not Club as much Nintendo as I miss Nintendo fun. Week, but I miss Club Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, Club Nintendo, Nintendo was good. Club Nintendo was good. Was uh, PlayStation so good. Home closed down. Don't miss that. Oh, I forgot about, forgot about that thing. It was running all the way until like March 2015. Yeesh. Yeah, uh, the rumor that Netflix is doing a Zelda TV series <laughs> hit the interwebs, and uh, well, that hasn't happened yet. Doesn't mean it won't, I guess. But uh, it turned into Stranger Things. <laughs> yep, <laughs> possible. Uh, Rock Paper Shotgun did an interview with Peter Molyneux, uh, and they asked him straight up if he's a liar. Like Ooh. I don't know if you remember this amazing uh, interview. Um. But yeah, yeah, that what, didn't sit well with me. What what? It was what a kind very of... antagonistic interview. Actually, you go yeah. back and read it. Well, it was very how antagonistic. You ask a, how can you ask a question like, "Are you a liar? Are you a liar?" Yeah. What what kind of and answer are you gonna? Yeah. What do you what expect kind of... from that? I mean, I don't know. If he I says yes, know. then do you believe him? Is he actually not a liar? If he claims to be a liar, then wouldn't that statement potentially be a lie? Thus, I think honestly, turning at him that point into not a liar. But if he's telling the uh, 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 a falsehood, if he says no, I'm not, then couldn't he be a liar who is telling you that he's not because he lies? Mm-hmm. It's a okay. robot killer. <laughs> That's a robot killer question. What did they expect? Yeah. Did they think that maybe he was secretly uh, some sort of uh, artificial intelligence like like some sort of android were they trying to short like a, out like his, a small his brain boy possible possible well, that's a whole different character <clears throat> mm, mm. that would be milo of course milo yes. hello did, and uh, did, th- did, th- did they bring down... milo along for that little quay you and a hey there little what? friends I'd say q again k of course that's in k. that's in my 2016 roundup there your gamer did a piece on uh, lionhead closing down and uh, had a whole thing about how the Milo and Kate demo was faked. Uh, well, that's a very rude thing to say, isn't it? 
<laughs> I mean, to call me Milo, the cute little virtual British boy, fake. Well, it's very rude indeed. You're like and, uh, developing a lisp during this <laughs> as you go on. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I just, or is I, your name Simon and do you like to do drawings? That puts a real twist in me neck like as it to does. Do drawings. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, anyway, well, Nintendo they announced that they were getting alone. into the mobile gaming business in 2015. And that went so well their for first, Nintendo. Their first game, uh, game in quotes, Mitomo, uh, came out in 2016. Ooh. So, um, Kojima. And now it was announced that Kojima's leaving Konami once MGS5 was complete. Oh, what's what what became of him? Yeah. My friend just told me he found a harmonica in Death Stranding. Like Ooh. literally just texted me. Nice. Okay. Uh future shop, shop of the future closed. Aw. Yeah. Yes, I remember when that happened and it was surprising. Mm. Uh, and sad. Yeah. Uh Silent Hills got canceled. I remember when that happened and it was surprising and yeah. sad. <laughs> uh sony buys on live in 2015 because guy kai wasn't enough because guy kai wasn't enough for them so they also bought on live <laughs> mm. <clears throat> nintendo hired doug bowser and the internet uh oh went yeah. crazy with fun what jokes. happened to that guy it's because his name is bowser <laughs> that's right uh, uh i wonder if he had an 85 metacritic game on his resume ouch <laughs> the bloodstained kickstarter launched Oh, yeah. I'm still playing that game. Uh, Nintendo resurrected the Nintendo World Championships for E3. Well, 2015. did they? They resurrected uh, the name. It didn't well, feel like they? the same thing. I guess. I guess not. Well, they had Super Mario Maker and uh, Splatoon in there. That was, that was, that was good. Uh, but we got ru- the first rumors for Nintendo NX ha- happened in 2015. Mm-hmm. Oh, because it's like next. Yeah. Uh, Steam started offering refunds. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter oh. happened. Man. And I know that we've talked about Shenmue 3 already on this show, so let me reiterate. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you, Wait, don't you like Shenmue? You well, love we already Shenmue. talked about that, Phil. You don't need to ask me the same questions you asked me three weeks ago. <laughs> I... <laughs> That would be literally three weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. We'll find out tomorrow as we wait. What? What? <laughs> uh, Rocket League <laughs> came out on the PlayStation 4 as part of PlayStation Plus and kind of oh, yeah. uh, caught fire. Yes. Fire. Yes, it did. Uh, so, Metera- uh, Met- Metoration Force. Metroid Federation Force. <laughs> Metoration. <laughs> Metoration Force. That was the development uh, code name. Received. Mm. Uh, Loads and loads and loads of negative feedback uh, when it was announced at uh, E3. Well, that that title didn't help. So no. they started off. They announced it as uh, they announced or they teased Blitzball at uh, the Nintendo World Championships, and then uh, announced Federation Force uh, at E3. And yeah, did not go well. All the way up until they released the game, and after didn't go well. Huh. Uh, Satoru Iwata passed away in 2015. Mm, that's sad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Razor bought uh, Ouya. Oh, Ooh, yeah. How'd that so, work out for him? I don't know. I'm sure the CEO is very happy about it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there was uh, an embargo on the review embargo for Fallout 4. Apparently, you couldn't say when <clears throat> the reviews were coming out. Mm. And yeah, uh, the Psychonauts 2 Kickstarter happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. And uh, Kojima Productions went independent away from Konami 2015. So I think that uh, brings us to number, number five game. Number well, five. I was just about to say that. Number five. Num- number five. Cinco. Oh, and it's me. Wanna... That's um, you, Still you. I always forget. Still you. <clears throat> uh, this is a game that we talked about last episode, actually. You guys ruined my top five, by the way. Um, oh, man. <laughs> it's, uh, my number five is uh, Marvel's Spider-Man. Hey, flip, flip, flip. Roping around the city has never been so much fun. Is that a vanilla Coke, CJ? It is a Coke Zero. 
with uh, polar oh, bear on it. Nah, it needs to be vanilla. Yeah. Um, no. No. Vanilla Coke's great. It doesn't. No. Vanilla Coke, vanilla Coke is, is not great. What? Yeah, it is. Uh, you're what? wrong. What? No. No, You're vanilla wrong. Coke Zero is not great. CJ does not like vanilla. <laughs> well, I Coke. will agree. I'll agree. I used to like Coke vanilla Zero Coke. Not great. I used to like vanilla Coke, but I don't like it anymore. Vanilla? What? That's yeah. weird, man. We can't Sorry. be friends now. Sorry. Oh. Marvel Spider Man. Um, yeah. Not not the biggest Spider Man fan in the world. Uh, but this game is uh, just like it was. It came out. Not only is it a great game, but it came out at the exact right time for me. Because of obviously the the MCU, mm-hmm. where it was in full effect at the time. We were, I think, when this came out, what we were heading into the final two movies of probably the first or well, the the final two phase, Avengers or whatever phase we're in. Yeah, the, the, yeah, Endgame. Yeah. We're going toward Endgame, right? Um, and so I was sort of getting more excited about Spider Man. Uh, previous Spider Man games could take or leave. Some of them were really good, and I enjoyed them at the time, but got tired of them quick. This one hooked me from start to finish um i loved the in-world reimagining of the different characters especially the uh the the rogues gallery that was in this game Mm -hmm. um as you mentioned uh last last episode phil uh octavius what they did with octavius i absolutely loved and Mm -hmm. they really brought peter parker and his relationships to the various people in his life they really they killed it. I mean, it was just so yeah. perfectly done. Um, yeah. so this is without all that, this would still be a great game. Oh, oh yeah, with that, especially his relationship with Octavius, yeah. um, and the payoff at the end of the game. I mean, it 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 got me that and his relationship with Aunt May obviously choked me up. Yeah, in that movie. it was yeah. genuinely hard. You felt bad for the character of Peter Parker at the end mm-hmm. of that game to the point that I think you and I both said best Spider Man movie. <laughs> Yeah, really. <clears throat> um, and you know what? Uh, something I, I didn't mention uh, last time as well, <clears throat> but I really like how they were teasing Miles in this game. Uh, yeah. Miles yeah, yeah. Morales shows up in, in the game. Uh, you do actually play as him a bit, right? You in do, yes. One of the uh, stealth parts. Stealth missions, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's <clears throat> certainly seems like he's he was there to kind of hint at and that was a, a great sequel. relationship. That was a great relationship as well between Peter and him, because in that it was interesting to see Peter evolving into the role of mentor yeah. with him, which is of course what his relationship was with Octavius, right, throughout most of the the game. So, yeah, um, oh, just oh, I love this game so much. And and <laughs> want to go a step further too, because uh, as far as the MCU goes, I was in one hundred and ten percent with the Marvel Netflix series. Oh, as well. right, right. Absolutely loved those for the most part. Some of them were better than others. And I loved that um, uh, the developers of Spider-Man felt the need to give nods to those characters in there as well. Like if you if you flipped around the city, you could find like Alias Investigations and Nelson and Murdoch's oh, right. law firm and little things like little touches like that, you know, and, and there was lots of stuff like that where you could go find um, uh, your uncle's gravestone as well and no, his parents' <clears throat> gravestone. No, his uncle's, Uncle Ben's gravestone. Uncle um, ben. Anyway, so much to love about that game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, what a great game! And I didn't, I didn't think because we've seen so many crappy licensed superhero games mm-hmm. when we got to this games of the decade. Until this game came out, obviously, I would never even imagine that any hmm. superhero game would have been on this list. So yeah, but yeah. there it is. <clears throat> Very nice. Uh, my number five game is, uh, a game that I first played <clears throat> on the Vita. Whoa. Do you remember? Do you remember <clears throat> the Vita? I do F-129. remember the Vita. <clears throat> this was a, this was a Vita game from a two- handheld PlayStation Yeah, from 2012 gravity rush, oh, yeah. gravity which rush. was, uh, eventually of course ported over to PS4. You can still play it on PS4. I adore <clears throat> Gravity Rush. I everything about that game uh, just felt kind of streamlined to my taste. I loved uh, the world. I loved the aesthetic. That kind of uh, uh, the artist Mobius. Uh, the world just uh, felt like a, a living version of his artwork. I loved the music. Uh, the the main character Cat was wonderful and charming 
uh, the the core mechanic of the game, which was, of course, uh, being able to manipulate gravity to turn it off and float and send yourself flying through the levels uh, to be able to kind of stand on walls and upside down on the ceiling so you could thoroughly explore this. Like Lionel this... Richie. Well, that's, a, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's like, huh. <laughs> we all know what a, a Lionel Richie fan I am. Mm -hmm. uh, and why wouldn't you be? He's delightful. I mean, he's the reason why I took a uh, 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 pottery classes when i was that in college was a treasure yep you know i wanted to be able to to sculpt uh, a, a bust of lionel richie, richie. yeah um but yeah just you know that freedom to explore this this uh you know kind of fantastic world you're you know the the, the city of course is floating so you can go underneath it and and all around uh and just you know just a weird you know, kind of creepy environments, but, but, you know, but it, it inviting, like you want to explore this, this kind of odd uh, place where you're at. And uh, yeah, just, I had so much fun with Gravity Rush. And yeah, once you kind of master, uh, you know, movement in that game, you know, turning off gravity and rocketing yourself around and then hitting gravity again at just the right moment to flip and land or to, to stick to the wall or whatever. Is just so satisfying and just yeah, mm. wonderful, wonderful game. Love Gravity Rush. Nice and Gravity Rush too, but uh, the first one I, I I did prefer the first one. Okay, so, okay, cool. Yeah, love Gravity Rush. <clears throat> well, I want to start out this top five mm -hmm. uh, at number five with That's a good place to start. Yeah, <laughs> with and a pirate need... game. Oh, here it is. This well, is we know what we know are which you, one it ain't. Ready? Oh, it's are absolutely not. Assassin's Creed Black Flag. <laughs> Assassin's Creed or <laughs> Black Flag. That oh, really? I was joking. Is it really? Oh, wow. It is Assassin's Creed for Black Look Flag. God damn it! That means the other one's still on its way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know. We know where that other one's landing. Let's not be coy about it. Well. We'll see. We'll just oh, have to see. But, that. Uh, Assassin's Creed for Black Flag. Yes. So. <sighs> Typically, I have not been a huge fan of the Assassin's Creed games. Like mm -hmm. the first one came out, I didn't play it. The second one came out, I tried it, thought it was like, eh, whatever. Brotherhood was okay. Three, I hated, but it was a glitchy mess when it came out. And I also bought the Wii U version, which didn't get any patches. <laughs> so that was a that was a bad purchase decision, I think. Uh, but Black Flag, you know, came out uh, as a multi-platform game last gen and uh, and current gen on PS4. So I bought it on PS4 and just played the hell out of it it really just uh struck me as an awesome game and maybe it's because you're a pirate and uh what is it with you and pirates i really yeah, do need to know i didn't i, like, I, did not I realize didn't this know this about thing. you yeah i didn't know this about me either this until is, this is like finding out that Stewart's really into model trains or something <laughs> apparently i like pirate games uh, uh but yeah assassin's creed 4 you uh you know control a pirate ship for a lot of the game it's a mechanic in the game uh that is super satisfying uh naval combat is really fun in the game just you know broadsiding another uh ship with your cannons is fantastic uh and you also have to take down forts and things so you have to kind of take down uh both land and sea targets with your with your cannons and uh just had a ton of fun ended up playing this uh for months taking over like all the all of the areas that you can take over in the game and uh just loved it my favorite assassin's creed no doubt hmm. and in fact i just bought it again on the switch because it just came out on the switch <laughs> in a two-pack with uh black flag and, or with a in a two-pack with rogue because this is assassin's creed black flag um <laughs> <laughs> and people love the combat in this so much that not only did they do rogue which also has sea battles and pirate stuff but they announced uh, skull and bones which is supposed to be an entire game uh 
Ubi, from Ubisoft, not not related to Assassin's Creed, but that has like pirate combat mechanics. So that whole game is kind of based on the popularity of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, even though Skull and Bones is not out yet and uh, skip yeah, three this out? year. I don't even hmm. know when it's coming out. But uh, um, had a lot of fun with this game. It's my favorite Assassin's Creed. Uh, I've played games since this one. And they don't have pirates in it, so I just kind of lost interest. So weird. (laughs) But I'm looking forward, very much forward to playing through Assassin's Creed Rogue, which uh, just came out on the Switch and um, has pirates in it again. So very Mm. excited. Very excited about that. Um, But yeah. Pirates. That's my number five. Pirates. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Uh, before we get on to number four, mm-hmm. uh, I would like to look at uh, 2016. Oh, okay. Let's... <laughs> it was a very good year. Well, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, Pocket Morty's came out. It's very hey, personally there proud it is. of that game. And uh, Headlander, which was the game that, that I was, was producing with game. Double Fine. So, yeah, I like that game. Fantastic. Uh, Mitomo launched. Yeah. You know? Nintendo's first mobile thing. Uh, so there was a news story. Jonathan Blow tweeted out a picture of a jug that had some yellow liquid or, yeah, yellow liquid in it. And it was uh, um, maybe... You threw CJ off it completely. Was... There, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> threw me yeah. off. Yeah. Just messaged me something. Thanks, thanks, Phil. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Learned to... Uh... Learn to multitask. Learn to multitask yeah. Is what Phil's trying to multitask. Anyway, to you. Jonathan yeah. Blow tweeted out a picture of the jug that he used while he was developing the witness. The jug that he Jesus. peed in. Great. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> there was a trailer for Uncharted Four that used some. Hey, by the way, that's concept really, art. That's really weird. <laughs> yeah. It, did you he not have access to bathrooms while he was making that game? Or I don't. I don't know. Like even if you're working on something intensely, yeah. How far away is the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. seriously, <laughs> that's weird, man. <laughs> I do not yeah. approve. Yeah. Hold on, I have to text my wife something. Oh. Don't know where Charlotte is. Stop. <laughs> uh, I can't talk had... now. Podcasting. There it is. Yeah. Hold on. Let's do it again. Oh, okay. Doesn't she know you're busy? Well, with yeah. very important things. Yeah. <laughs> this is... She does know that I'm busy. Anyway, Uncharted uh, 4, I think it was 4. Uh, there was a trailer. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uncharted 4. Yeah. The trailer for Uncharted 4 used some concept art from Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. That was weird. Womp, womp. So, yeah, that got excised and replaced, of course. Yes. Uh, there was an Xbox Live outage in February 2016 that a lot of people loved. Womp, womp. Yep. Uh, Microsoft showed off HoloLens with Young Conquer. Remember Young Conquer? It's another uh, like early, off model looking. Another early uh, hard piece of hardware that we get to work on the prototype for that a company yeah. I was with. Oh yeah! I found out Asobo Studios uh, did the Young Conquer stuff. Asobo, yes. of course, Plague Tale Innocence. Oh, mm-hmm. fantastic game! Uh, so that was interesting. Anyway, Lionhead Studios closed. Hmm. Peter Molyneux's Lionhead. Did yeah. we ever find out if Peter Molyneux was a liar? Or <laughs> no, we didn't. Okay. As, we still don't know. <laughs> uh, you may remember, of course, there were a number of fake NX controller pictures that lit the uh-huh. internet on fire. Yeah, I don't uh, remember that. Yeah, there's one. I, I in do fact, remember that. Uh, that uh, there was a YouTube video where the guy showed how he did it. Oh, was wasn't that wasn't one of those ones where, like people figured it out based on like a tree that was reflected in the screen or something? That was they were verifying the authenticity of it because it looks like that's massives inter- or like Ubisoft's office in. Germany or something. I, like I that. hate the like, internet. It was ridiculous. <laughs> uh, so crazy. Hold on a second. Jesus. Wow. Should I text her? Do you want me to text her? <sighs> <laughs> 
No. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, fake, yeah, fake NX controllers. Uh, Microsoft ended the production of the Xbox 360 in 2016. So mm. not that not that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Disney Infinity uh, was declared Mercifully dead. Mercifully put out of its misery. Yeah, declared really. Declared dead. The end of Toys to Life in 2016. So Skylander started it back in 2011. <laughs> and five years later, completely dead. After many Skylanders games and then, of course, three Disney Infinity uh, incarnations. Oof. And uh, Lego Dimensions in there, too. Yeah. Um, the My Lone Kate demo was re- revealed to have been faked. No surprise there. Fake news. Milo's fake news. <laughs> I don't believe uh, that for a second. Microsoft introduced the Xbox One S and then announced uh, Project Scorpio for holiday 2017. Pokemon mm. Go launched in July. Yeah. NES <laughs> Classic Edition uh, got announced. You got mine sitting got, right here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got... Uh, an announcement of the Detective Pikachu movie. Yeah, that happened in 2016. <laughs> Starring, <up>. Deadpool. <clears throat> Starring Deadpool. Starring uh, Deadpool. Not Danny DeVito. Nope. Like many people thought it might happen. Um, no Man's Sky great. got released in 2016. Well, no Man's Sky Alpha got released. I uh, get, yeah, the Alpha, really. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at my phone again. Don't mind me. Oh, boy. Don't mind me at all. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the food delivery guy can't find our house. It's oh, great. boy. Uh, Palmer Lucky got in some hot water over uh, oh, funding geez. a meme <clears throat> factory. That was mm. great. Mm. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2 got announced via a tweet. I don't know if you'll remember this. Uh, Rockstar tweeted out about just Red a Dead red, red <laughs> background with yeah. the Rockstar logo, and uh, that was it. Hmm. So, and of course, that teaser, that original teaser, came out the same day that Nintendo uh, teased the Switch for the first time, showed off the oh. Switch video, reveal hmm. video. So, I think it was even the same day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, PlayStation Pro got released in 2016. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you will remember Super Mario Run. Nope got released yeah, yeah. uh had something like 40 million downloads something like that but Jeez. a lot of people complained about having to spend ten dollars after the, like the first level i was one mm. of them yeah <clears throat> hold on a second guys <clears throat> how are you doing today greg mm, you know just checking facebook good 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 yeah me too I'm kidding. I'm not. Uh, I'll edit out all this in post. No, you won't. I will, though. <laughs> I will, though. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm, uh, I'm just browsing Amazon Japan. What do they got? Anything good? Uh, I bought some toys off of there. Nice. Ordered ordered some, ordered some toys from Japan. Nice. That will very nice. Hopefully, did they did they ship yet? Let's see. <sighs> Last of Us Part Two, yeah, got announced in December oh, right, right, at right. PlayStation Experience. Uh, that that would be a thing, and of course, uh, it's gonna be released in May of 2020. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. And Microsoft announced that they were buying Mixer. All so, uh, right. Which will at the time was spent called lots of money to get all the Twitch people over there. Called Beam. Right. Oh. Yeah. Nice. All right. And there we How go. are you going to eat your food, CJ? If I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to eat my food. See, Other people what, are going to eat food. And then this is the sacrifice <sighs> that CJ makes for the show. Yeah, I really. know, right? I'm not going to eat. Ugh. Because, yeah. Heartbreaking. Uh, well, I guess that means uh-huh. that we are at number four. Number four. Numero cuatro. And, and it's me again, Greg, I know, but I'm having Greg. trouble here. Hang on. There we go. Whew. Man, that right. was embarrassing. Yeah, all right. No, I'm good. It has, you know, it happens. Yeah. Uh, my number four is uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. Oh. Whoa. Mario. Because wow. it's so effing good. 
And I've been really, really happy is. to see over the last uh, month a lot of people going nuts over the same scene that I did, which is the dance party Ooh. scene uh, where Luigi himself is dancing and, and snapping his fingers the whole time. Um, <laughs> it The game is just... It's charming. It's extremely yeah. charming, which is what I wanted from a Luigi's Mansion. First of all, super excited that we got a Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, Ooh, Dark Moon was yeah. was kind of exciting enough in that yes. we finally got a sequel to Luigi's Mansion, which is a much overlooked, uh, I think, unfairly maligned GameCube launch game um, that I love. And I love more and more the further away we get from the launch. So I went back and actually listening to some old episodes of this show, like the first 10 episodes, <clears throat> I talk about Luigi's Mansion a bit saying I liked it, but you know, it, was like, it was okay. Wasn't crazy about it. And looking at it now, it's it's just one of my all-time favorites. So Yeah. Yep. And I feel like for the most part, Luigi's Mansion 3 captured everything I loved about that. Um Luigi is extremely lovable in his uh his cowardice. Um they they did a that series has done a great job of giving him a real personality, which is nice. Yeah, and it's so completely different from everybody else in the uh, in that sort of world. So, uh, and it's adorable. You just <laughs> want to give the poor little guy a hug, like he's just so uh, scared all the time. And yeah, and uh, but he just sort of soldiers on. And and um, the different floors in in the 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 hotel work great. You know, it's a, to be more traditional levels. There's some really creative puzzle solving involved. Um. And then some points where, uh, like the the different boss fights are are extremely varied as well. And then some points too where you power up your uh, your vacuum and you literally just suck up the entire set piece in yep. the room that you're in sometimes. <laughs> and it's it's really satisfying. Anyway, hmm. fantastic game. Um, and yeah, I mean it's also really the newest is. game on my list. The only the only other one from 2019. Two games from 2019 on my list actually, but. Hmm. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Pretty awesome. Uh, I guess it's me now. Yeah. Mm. Uh, my number four game uh, came out last year, 2018, and it is Astro Bot Rescue Mission. Mm. Oh, SVR. Uh, Greg certainly talked about this one last episode. Uh, but yeah, this was. Uh, this was kind of my first like real experience with a vr game hmm. and kind of an, an unfortunate way to start because there's only yeah. uh, one way to go and that is down because uh, <laughs> astrobot uh, is so so well made i mean vr aside yeah. it is an amazing platform game full of personality uh just fun to play the control is spot on uh the levels are fun uh to go through uh, like you said, Greg, uh, never a moment in that game where you're not smiling. Yeah. Uh, they are constantly throwing new things at you, uh, just to, to give you a, a new experience as you, as you play through great boss fights, too. each level, the boss vices are, are wonderful. Um, certainly I've discussed on this before how, uh, the game, uh, frightened me a few <laughs> times, yeah. uh, yep. thanks yep. to the VR gimmick. Um, but it, it was great. Um, and yeah, just ah, so, so good. Just, I absolutely adore uh, Astrobot. And, um, yeah. and, the, and uh, you know what? And again, uh, the music is yes. one of my favorite video game soundtracks Great in soundtrack. years. Yeah. Uh, and I, I will admit uh, that there have been more than one occasion where I would uh, just go into a level and just sit there mm -hmm. for like 10 minutes and just not even move my dude around, not even run Astrobot around. I would just sit there and chill out on my couch in this virtual world and just relax and listen to the music and yeah. just kind of enjoy being surrounded by the world of Astrobot. Mm -hmm. It is so good, and I really, really hope that there's another... Yeah astrobot yeah. sometime in the future they've really got something with that character i yeah. don't know if they do i agree with you if they took that game out of vr it would still be a really great game oh absolutely i think the fact that it is vr helps that character be more oh. interesting than he is oh but he's for sure great 
Mm-hmm. He's a great character. And he was great when they when they first released the VR with the VR playroom. Yeah. Playroom. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. so you know, I, I would really like to hear of them yeah. doing more with that character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are there are a I few hope they're parts. working on a sequel or something. Oh, uh, I know, absolutely do. Oh, God, PlayStation so. Five comes out, and uh, they, I would imagine, will revise the PlayStation VR yeah. headset and the hardware, mm-hmm. right? If you want to, I mean, sell they're using Move controllers from like 2009 at this point. Like, <laughs> yeah, gotta, that's what right. they got to do. Yeah, <laughs> gotta improve something, right? Yeah. You want to uh, sell me a PS Five? You want to sell me an updated VR headset? Astrobot is going to do it. Astrobot yeah. Two or yeah an Astrobot uh, expansion of some kind. Like, I think it's kind of funny that we're mm-hmm. talking about VR and we're saying that a mascot is what will sell us on. <laughs> I know, right? Level of it, right? Which is so yeah. 1990s at this point. Yeah, But it, he's, it's so such a charming little uh, character. And, but, and, but again, the, the game is, is so good. And it, and I, I've heard people say this and I <laughs> hope it, it, you know, it it sounds almost like a you know, kind of like a backhanded compliment, um, but it feels like a Nintendo game. Yep. Mm-hmm. The, the the it's got that level of polish. That yeah, exactly. It feels like a Nintendo platformer, and it's uh, just wonderful. Love nice. love me some Astrobot. Very nice. Yep. Well, my number four is. The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Ooh. I wonder when that was going to show up. Yeah. yeah. For the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, and I think you know, we've talked about on the show, I think even very recently, about remakes of an old thing, but bringing something new to it. And, you know, this Link Between Worlds started as a remake of A Link to the Past and then became something else. Uh, became a new game, but sort of based on a link to the past, including mm-hmm. the world map and uh, you know the graphics just are very similar to the Super Nintendo game. And the mechanic of Link being brought into a two D plane and moving around, like it works so well, and it works so well on the three DS where you have the three D effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is another one of those games on the 3DS where I left the effect on because it was just so good and so well done, right? Uh, yeah. And they did a lot of fun things with it. They had a lot of fun uh, bits in those dungeons where you know you're moving over top of an area you were in before and can see everything happening below. And um, yeah, they really had fun with the mechanics of the game in in within the 3d capabilities of the 3ds yeah um but just a really amazing sort of retro remake slash sequel that's just fun from the very first minute all up until you collect the last of those little octopus babies yeah uh, that are squealing around (laughs) when (laughs) you go find them like i just love every aspect of a link between worlds and um you know, when Ocarina of Time came out, I didn't really peg myself as a Zelda aficionado or like a fan of that series. But over time, like the games they made since uh, Ocarina have really like cemented the fact that I love every single Zelda game that Nintendo makes <laughs> pretty much. Uh, and Link Between Worlds was just a great sort of dip back to the past. And um, I like it more than A Link to the Past, which <laughs> maybe blasphemous talk uh to many but i think it's just a really well paced game uh the fact that you can rent all the equipment up front like there's nothing sort of hidden behind progression just makes uh makes for a game that feels like it's super open uh for the first time in the zelda series like you felt like you could really go anywhere and uh deal with any any type of enemy because of that whole uh mechanic there yeah and uh, loved it. So that's my number four, Link Between Worlds. Nice. Yeah. So let's see. What year are we up to? 2017. Mm. Oh, let me scroll through my list here. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if you remember this. Another Kickstarter. Maybe maybe this is around the time when video game Kickstarters stopped uh, being, being backed. But David Crane did one for Jungle Adventure. 
uh, David oh, Crane, of course, yeah. the creator of Pitfall on the 2600. He was going to do a uh, a game that was very reminiscent of Pitfall, but uh, it failed. Did mm. not uh, make its goal. Not even close. I forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah. same here. <laughs> uh, Microsoft launched Xbox Game Pass mm. in 2017. So heard of it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Xbox One X got uh, this is Project Scorpio was uh, released. And of course, the Nintendo Switch came out. Uh, E3 decided that they were going to let the public in for the first time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Netflix announced that they were doing a Castlevania TV show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you remember another Kickstarter that unfortunately also didn't make it? Project Rap Rabbit. Nope. Oh, Maybe yeah. That. <laughs> that was the... Just the Nana Ansha. Nana Ansha. And... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. The Owenden, yeah, guy uh, mm -hmm. producing as well. Like that was uh, Parappa plus Owendon sort of mashup, but uh, it yeah. was not a very well planned Kickstarter. No, it to wasn't. be honest, like they described a music game that would be like four stages long or something. And it's just not. When they had no, they had like a piece of concept art, and that was really about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they didn't show anything uh, until late in the campaign. They did finally show like a video, a concept video, but it was too too little, too late, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, the Super NES Classic got announced. Oh yeah. So we had the NES Classic the previous year and the Super NES Classic this year. Yep. Uh, you remember Hellblade uh, came out, but uh, it also bluffed gamers by saying that it would delete your save or it insinuated that it was going to delete your save if you uh, screwed up too much. Oof. That became like a big thing. Didn't actually do it, but it like insinuated that it might. Right. Um, Toys R Us started to be in financial trouble. Well, uh, at least not the up headline here. Started, started hitting. <laughs> <laughs> the Connect ended uh, production. I didn't know yep. that. In 2017, no more Connect. Mm. So for a little while, they made uh, more Connects and had the cable that connected it to the newer version of the console, but uh, they stopped making it at that point. Huh. Still the best way to play Just Dance. Ju yeah, well, and also um, Dance Central was a really fun game, and there were a couple of good Connect games, but hmm. uh, EA bought connected. Respawn Entertainment. <clears throat> how'd that work out well it worked out pretty well with apex legends and uh, jedi fallen order i'd say mm. uh ea visceral had the their star wars game canceled it was 18 oh, yeah. 18 wasn't that or no that was no, that died that was when lucas arts got uh closed oh, okay. by disney mm. back earlier this was the amy <clears throat> hennig game right that yeah. uh, was troubled and got canceled uh there That's was some shame Big layoffs at Telltale, mm. <laughs> which, you know, yeah, yeah, foreshadowed what would happen there. Uh, Battlefront Two, Star Wars Battlefront Two came out, and of course had some issues Lots with stuff. microtransactions. Mm. Uh, some people uh, didn't like that, for sure. Um, yeah. Super Mario Serial came out with. Uh... <laughs> How many boxes do you have, Phil? uh i believe i saved two boxes i think i have I one mean, box they I, just I, the box yeah just the box i i ate the cereal, cereal but i i did uh flatten and save the box and that doubled this in amiibo yeah, yeah i had an amiibo yeah. thing on the bottom of the box yep and i forget what it gave, it gave you like coins in super mario odyssey yeah yeah maybe uh maybe a mushroom or something like that yep or something yeah Nintendo Power came back as a podcast. We were talking yes, about the magazine closing last episode, and uh, yep. it came back re reimagined as a podcast uh, hosted by Chris Slate. Yep. And of course, who could forget the, the classic video game that I'm sure many will call the game of the decade? Fortnite got released. Uh, <laughs> yes. In uh, like August. Well, we still have life. our we still have our top three to go. So. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, of course, it released without the battle royale mode. The battle royale mode was added later. Um, Fortnite came out as with just save the world, mm. which is still a part of the game, but not the focus mm. of the game anymore. 
So anyway, that uh, wraps up 2017. I guess that means it's time for number three. Number three. Numero tres. Uh, my number three is uh, The Last of Us. Oh, The Last of Us. The Last of Us. The Last um, of Us. Yeah. So uh, Naughty Dog moving on from uh, Uncharted. I mean, not. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't. Was this before Uncharted Four? It was. Yes. <clears throat> but either way, another Naughty Dog game that wasn't Uncharted. Um, <sighs> that intro, man. That intro. That intro. Rough. That was a rough. Emotive- rough to get through yeah you take an emotional <laughs> beating in the first 20 minutes of that game mm-hmm. um it's and true. i feel like i talk about this a lot but clearly this is something that's become very important to me in games is when when uh writers get the characters right mm-hmm. uh man does it ever resonate with me and mm. the last of us did that the first 20 minutes uh with joel and his daughter whose name i don't remember um they did such a wonderful job at um building a believable father-daughter relationship yeah, uh, in that first few minutes and then having basically the whole world go to shit uh, yeah. in real time um, and the terror that that brought, because you're playing as her at the time, the terror that that brought with it. And then, of course, how that intro ends is just completely heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, one of the first times I remember getting really choked up in a game, actually. Uh, yep. And, you know, and we, I mentioned this last episode, obviously – uh the three of us now as fathers i think we were i don't know if we were all fathers at that point too i think i believe so Um, 2013 really drives it home even further so but then even after that um they basically spent the rest of the game building that same relationship between joel and uh what's her name thank you joel and ellie um (laughs) and (laughs) and it's fantastically done but it's it's and it's surrounded by Mm. a great game Yep. Um, the stealth sort of action with the clickers uh, yeah. is super well done. You had to kind of suspend your disbelief with Ellie running around and never getting seen or heard. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you let that go early on and yeah. you're just playing a fantastic game with a really interesting ending that I feel like all of us had a really nice discussion about as well because you can go one of two very different ways in that ending. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. What well, a great the thing game. about um, you mentioned Ellie not being seen in the game. Uh, I think they did an interesting thing in The Last of Us where your player character, um, you know, can be in cover. But if somebody's like poking out, that's not a character that you're controlling. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, it was done ruin for right your. Reasons. Yeah, doesn't yeah. ruin your position. So it's it's sort of gameplay related because if they did that, where anybody in your party could reveal your location. Yeah. The game would be suddenly unplayable. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The AI yeah. just wasn't uh, good enough for them to keep everybody together in a sort of believable way. But uh, I mean, really made you. Joel ended up being one of my favorite characters because to completely break him down in the first twenty minutes of the game, the way they yep. did, yeah, and you spend the rest of the game dealing with that and building up trust again and 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 you know love again. Surrounded by, like I say, a fantastic game. I can't wait for Last of Us 2, but oh my God, I think it's taking too long. I'm really worried that I'm really worried there's no way The Last of Us 2 could ever live up to my expectations at this point because it's been right, so yeah. long. But uh, the thing we'll with see. that is, I want to try to forget about the trailers that I mm. have seen. Like, I'm not going to re- go rewatch any of those trailers or uh, E3 cinematics that they. Mm. But no, me neither. I just want to I just want to sit down with the game and play it. Like yeah, same I, I I did watch those things, <laughs> but I don't want it, my memory refreshed of what happened in those in part because I think some of those were sort of ultra violent for um to demonstrate the animation prowess of Naughty Dog's tools uh mm-hmm. in in some cases, but uh yeah, I'm sh- I'm sure some of that violence is is justified in context, but uh, some of those early trailers anyway made me a bit uncomfortable. Hmm. Um, but they made the, but the, the, the argument they there earned is it. They, they were earned it with to. the first game. They earned yeah. the they earned showing the violence in the first game. I'm sure they will with the second game. I just I hope uh, they do. I just want to experience the game. I don't want to see any more trailers. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I want to stop uh, hearing about how good it's going to be and just experience how it's going to be. I'm yes. sure it's going to be fine. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. 
Uh, my number three game is Minecraft. The Mojangs uh, and later uh, Microsoft Studios uh, game, which, uh, as CJ mentioned last episode, uh, went uh, out of beta in 2011. Yep. And uh, continues to be huge and uh, hugely supported uh, to this day. Uh, in fact, I just heard yep. that uh, PlayStation 4 is getting crossplay. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Minecraft. Finally. <laughs> That was a holdout for a yes. long, long time. Yep. I uh, I, I first played uh, Minecraft on PC way back in the day. Of course, it has been ported to everything. everything including the sun. 3DS. Yeah. Came on 3DS. Yeah, for crying out loud. Um, I love Minecraft. Uh, it is such a simple concept. Uh, you know, a, a kind of virtual Lego set. Uh, they just dump you in a giant, randomly generated world, and you do what you want to do. Um, I know that that sort of freedom you two have uh, kind of balked at. I, I, you know, you guys aren't as no, into that no. sort of thing as I am, but uh, just that level of freedom to just be able to run around, dig, and explore, and just find. Uh, you know, discover caverns or hidden uh, mines, uh, discover cool new uh, biomes, uh, you know, little structures, find villages. Uh, and then, you know, just you can you can play it as an exploration thing. You can play it as a building thing, uh, you know, building up your own world. And then, uh, you know, just all the 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 levels of creativity that the game structure allows i mean people have built functioning computers in that game yep. by using uh the redstone which is kind of like circuitry in that game world uh people have built just you know in crazy machines and stuff um all the different skins and and worlds you can download for it uh it is it it and you know you can you can have you know enemies and monsters uh, you can set it to peaceful if you just want to go around and explore you can set it to creative if you just want to build and have access to everything without having to mine stuff uh i love that freedom and it's 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 really just a well-made and well-maintained uh game with all the updates and mm -hmm. of course finn ended up getting into it uh which resulted in uh you know, he and i playing it together uh, quite a bit, which is amazing uh, for the two of us to be able to build structures together. Uh, so you got, you know, that kind of like family bonding, which is wonderful. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a reason Minecraft is so big and there's a reason it remains so big uh, eight plus years after its release. Uh, yeah. And because it's it's darn good. And I, I do, I, I think it's it's one of the best games of the decade easily. Yeah. And actually, like, I think when Microsoft bought Minecraft, mm -hmm. my initial thought was they're going to make it Xbox exclusive yeah. or yes. do something. They're going to ruin it. Stupid with it, right? No. <laughs> yeah. I hoped, I had hoped that they wouldn't, wouldn't do that. And right. they haven't done that. Nope. Like, <laughs> no. In fact, they, they didn't go ahead and make minecraft to a, an xbox exclusive right, or right. something like that and then leave it only on one platform in fact you know they if anything they only really expanded the number of platforms that it was on yeah and they also got it on new platforms really quickly like minecraft for the switch came out extremely quickly after the oh, yeah. nintendo switch launched yes, it came indeed. out in like may <laughs> so it was like three months later minecraft's on it like it came out for everything and uh the fact that they haven't ruined it is great and also they're doing you know minecraft dungeons and all these spin-off things oh yeah but also on all those other platforms that can also play together with everything <laughs> like it really yeah. is like this thing that i never thought microsoft would buy it and actually like nurture it in the right way yeah, no they but they did they and, treated mm -hmm. it extremely well they're like, they're doing such a good job with it Hats off to them for that. And I actually kind of think Minecraft being on all platforms and being that sort of platform agnostic game is mm -hmm. 
may have encouraged what we're seeing with the entire Xbox strategy where they're releasing yep. Cuphead for yeah, the Switch and they're doing yeah. all these like crazy things that you normally wouldn't think like a platform holder would do. I think I th- want to think that Minecraft has to have some sort of influence in the fact that that game is a yeah. freaking juggernaut has to have had some sort of influence over that strategy direction and yeah. i think personally that it's a great strategy and direction so mm-hmm. <laughs> no it was it would have been so easy for them to just buy that and just shut it down from the rest of the world and say this is mm-hmm. this right. is our property but no because they, it's happened so many oh, other well that's times. just it that's just it they but they knew they knew what they were buying they knew why what they were buying was good and popular and instead of trying to just it's ours give it give it give it to us only they were like no we're gonna we're gonna nurture it we're gonna let it grow and thrive as it should and and, make tons of money at the same time yeah when that's just it it's like (laughs) yeah so yeah yeah, i'm is is this the only time where a smaller game or game (laughs) was was absorbed by a giant corporation and it ended up being wildly in the little game's favor i can't really think of another time (laughs) the only other time the only times i can think of this happening are more like a studio is purchased by x publisher and then you a few years down the line you hear about them be closed down well that's just yeah that's just it but this uh seems to be wildly in the opposite direction which good on you microsoft so yeah it could have gone could have gone badly yes <laughs> but but here we are so yes hooray excellent well my number three is a little game called the legend of zelda breath of the wild oh uh, yes and we all zelda all the time till we get to see a thieves <laughs> yeah exactly i don't think so uh <laughs> breath of the wild uh you know some people love the fact that the weapons uh, break. I am one of no, those. No, people. those people don't exist. You can say that all I you want. That's not people. true. I like the fact that you can. People pick, are like Peter Molyneux. I like the fact <laughs> that you can pick uh, anything up, and you have to sort of uh, reserve the good weapons for when you're fighting a strong opponent, and uh, you sort of have burner weapons on you at all the time, uh, at all times, just in case uh, you run into it's the mobs after you. Yeah, exactly. Um, everything about the game is uh, amazing to me. A refresh of the Zelda series completely. The fact that the game doesn't really have like a main theme, but also has piano cues that kind of start up and stop and um, based on what you're doing is just uh, very atmospheric. The world of Hyrule is uh, really well done. The fact that you really can go anywhere, even though the game sort of pushes you in natural directions um, after that first plateau area is awesome. Like the structure just has a ton of freedom with it. Um, The fact that you can, you know, climb any mountain that you see or uh, go up <laughs> any hill that you see and usually there's something there to interact with like mm-hmm. it might be a Korok a seed or something small but um, but it's usually something so you feel a little rewarded for exploring every nook and cranny of the game and the fact that Nintendo released updates to it to allow you to even see on the map where you've been uh, is just excellent it's awesome and uh I love the shrines, even though a lot of people wanted uh, dungeons. I like the fact that they're doing something new, and I think it was very gutsy of them to not just do dungeons again. I think um, Nintendo has a knack for finding a way for a franchise like Zelda or like Mario to feel fresh each each time. You know, like we talk about Super Mario Odyssey, like feeling fresh and and different, but how many Mario games have they done, right? Like, how does it feel so fresh and so different? It's these little things that they put into the game. Um, and I just really uh, enjoyed the atmosphere and the exploration, really everything about it. And it took me months to complete. And I think I've spent 120 hours playing Breath of the Wild, something like that. 
Um, and I'm very excited about the sequel, but it's a fantastic game to launch the Switch with, even though, yeah, it was originally uh, supposed to be on Wii U, which would have been good too. But uh, I'm glad they waited for their next console so that it was on a platform that people actually owned and could play on. And um, mm -hmm. been, you know, ecstatic that uh, they're doing a direct sequel to it. So, all right. Very nice. That is my number three, which means we are looking at 2018 Oof. now. Yeah. So, 2018, very interesting year because <laughs> he said that. <laughs> sea of Thieves came out in 2018. Well, yeah, yeah, it does. There, that, there that is. But also, uh, now <laughs> Microsoft announced that Xbox Game Pass would include first party games. Ooh. And Sea of Thieves is the first one uh, that uh, was launched that way. So, uh, gutsy to include Microsoft's first party games available for free with their game subscription program. Ooh. Very different, uh, different tact. Uh, they also announced that they bought a bunch of studios. So really like pumping up uh, the number of developers that would be working on the Xbox platform. Um, Toys R Us went away in the US, closed. Mm. Oh, Canada. Yeah. Uh, but also Gamers Club Unlocked ended in 2018. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't have access to that. You will remember that Philip Mewson wrote a review of dead cells that oh boy. incorporated <laughs> uh text from other reviewers uh so that's just called that's called you. plagiarism yeah plagiarism there you go don't, plagiarism. don't don't try and paint it as like something that's not just plagiarism stealing words yeah I believe yeah. is uh what that is uh billy mitchell got banned from twin galaxies yeah He's a big old cheater yeah uh we got the playstation classic mini Oh, uh, yeah. Which, uh, you know, yeah, Sony's yeah. bid to that capitalize on the bad, whole yeah. micro console, micro retro console thing, which yeah. a lot of companies are doing these days, but uh, was not very well received at all. <laughs> right. Uh, despite the PlayStation having what I believe to be a fantastic, I mean, you look at the tweets that are coming out with PlayStation 25 over the last week right. and like the PlayStation library just in general has so many great games. Oh, absolutely. Uh, for for Sony to not not hit it out of the park with the PlayStation Classic is it uh, it, it is did sad. seem like they were not treating that as a real product, and more of a cash grab. Yeah, which was is so sad. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of great stuff in that Sony stable. Agreed. Uh, mm -hmm. We got the first NES games with the Nintendo Switch Online launch. So, hmm, yeah. <laughs> I can uh -huh. see you're very excited about that. Uh, Microsoft introduced uh, the adaptive controller, so the that's hugely important. Oh hugely yeah, important accessibility oh, yeah. options for Microsoft platforms. So uh, impressed Xbox. with their continued uh, work on that. Yes, yeah. extremely impressive. Uh, we got the Epic Game Store in 2018, announced mm -hmm. during the Game Awards uh, with some of the first titles. And then, of course, who could forget the launch of Fallout 76? Mm. Everybody? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know Bethesda would probably like to. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <clears throat> but anyway, that is your 2018. So I think that means we are up to number two. Number two. Número dos. Uh, my number two is a game that we covered last episode as well. Uh, it's on CJ's list is Mario Kart 8. Oh, uh, I guess excellent. Deluxe is the better version. So Deluxe it is. Um, the the perfect version of Mario Kart as far as I'm concerned. Oh, it's, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like you said last episode, CJ, you think this might be the best one. I'm here to say it is the best one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it, and I also love with this one, I mean, it's just beautiful, obviously uh they've really refined what mario kart is here i i really like the um the different types of tracks that are in this game and i know that mario's kart has done this in the past but i think they did a great job of like you've got some sort of traditional mario kart courses you've got some very long sort of uh not necessarily circuits 
um like the like the downhill the downhill ski slope mm -hmm. uh one is a great example of that with with very changing environments um excuse me and uh you've got things like baby park in there where you know it's just this really small or uh the excite bike track is another great example of this which is yeah. a really small simple track that's just complete chaos because of that and uh it really they all lend themselves to to showing uh mario kart 8's strengths as far as gameplay goes mm, yeah um the dlc fantastic and i loved also that in this game more than anyone in the past i don't remember if they've done this in the past with the mario kart 8 games before but you started to see sort of the influence of something like a uh a smash brothers infiltrating yeah. mm. the mario kart franchise when you've got tracks from f-zero zelda animal Crossing. i don't think they had done that before i don't think so either so mm -hmm. it really actually gave me a lot of hope for the next one i i would love to see this sort of evolve into sort of the smash brothers of nintendo racing games yeah um still call it mario kart why not you know uh but, you know, or something like, say, uh, Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed, where you're just taking a ton of beloved franchises from this one publisher, which mm -hmm. Nintendo, who else but Nintendo has the, the depth, catalog of, depth of catalog to do that and uh, just yeah. go all out, you know, yeah. really. You'd want to still call it Mario Kart because yeah. so many people love that franchise, right? Plus, but call it, you could call it Mario Kart Nintendo Cup or but that, Nintendo Besides which, too, there. that franchise itself has so much depth because it's it's been around yeah. for so long. I mean, yeah. you know, I know that I get, I was super excited to see things like uh, the Ghost House, like a, a, a modernized version of the original yeah. Ghost House track yeah. in this. Um, they could do that forever and it would be great. You know, yes. there's still so many more tracks to mine from the older games, but then also, yeah, you throw in some of their other beloved franchises and it's like, it just, it creates itself. It prints money. It's, it's, I, I really, really, <laughs> really want them to, to get a Mario Kart nine announced and out there. Yeah. But I, it's, you know, this yeah. came out on the Wii U. I played it to death on the Wii U. It came out on the switch. It was one of the first switch games I bought. I played through it all again. I still pick it up every couple of weeks to play online still play it with my kids all the time it's a timeless game and it's yep. the only thing that's going to stop me from playing it is mario kart 9 coming out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i was sad when you know mario kart 8 deluxe came out and uh they didn't announce more stuff for it right me too. I kind of expected I get it. like maybe we'll get more but no yeah. yeah and i, I get, get it. it i mean but... the team ended up working on arms instead uh hmm. and who knows what they're doing now i really hope uh, mario kart 9 i hope mario kart 9 is in in the cards somewhere but uh <clears throat> yeah we'll have to see that would be great yes yes it would be uh my number two game is a game that really 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 came close to being my number one game uh mm -hmm. it was it was a big internal struggle for me for sometime uh you've heard me talk about this game many 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 gianna many, sisters many times before i talk of course of gianna sisters wow ds which i wait is it really i don't think that game Not actually really. came out uh, this decade <laughs> did it gianna sisters ds i don't remember I don't when that know. came out um although it might have um <laughs> no i i speak of course of rogue legacy Oh, oh yeah, right. Uh, from yeah. Cellar Door Games, uh, their rogue light uh, platform adventure game. Uh, I first played it on PS3 uh, and Vita. Uh, and bought it for every system under the sun. And yeah, it is. It has come out for many, many systems since. Uh, recently, picked it up again uh, on a, as a physical Switch uh, game from Limited Run. If it comes out on Stadia, you'll buy it. I see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! My would... son asked about getting a Stadia for Christmas today. What? Oh, no. oh I I warned him off pretty fast. Oh, his idea. Like, no. Son, I, Santa I, doesn't I, hate you like that. I wonder <laughs> if you know. Obviously, Google owns Stadia. If they're like prioritizing Stadia ads on YouTube, <laughs> I'll bet you they are. I bet you they are. Those are the ads. It's uh, a house ad. Yeah, their really. version of Mohawk and headphone jack. Oh, jeez. <laughs> No, I love Rogue Legacy. I, you know, I haven't shut up about this game since 
well, 2013 when it was first released. <laughs> it is yeah. so well made. Uh, the uh, the controls are impeccable. Uh, the the move set is fantastic. Once you uh, get good at that game, you can pull off some just wild acrobatics uh, just to to plow through levels, dodging enemy fire, jumping in, slashing at your foes, uh, exploring the. It is a really good game. It's it's so good and it's uh, challenging, but it never feels unfair. It never feels frustrating. Uh, you always feel like you're making some progress because, again, it is a it is a rogue light game mm-hmm. where you are expected to end up dying quickly until you've kind of played through and you know money you make <clears throat> you carry with you when you die, which allows you to power up your your characters, uh, allows you to purchase new weapons, uh, purchase new uh, armor, uh, new abilities like double jumps or being able to to dash. Uh, things like that uh so you know there's always that sense of progression and it is ah, just i don't know what it is but that game i guess this must be how cj feels when he plays uh, sea of thieves but but my game's fun so <laughs> wait hold on what dun, dun, uh, but, <laughs> but it's uh <laughs> but yeah it is it is great and i mean uh yeah the ps I think it's the PS3 version where I did max out my character. I actually went through the entire uh, skill tree, purchased every uh, upgrade for my character, uh, purchased all the available weapons and armor and and uh, it, skill enhancements and all that. So hmm. I think I put maybe, what did it say, like 150 hours into the PS3 version, all all told. Uh, which for me, it's a lot of hours. Is that's a long time. Unspeakable. <laughs> you know, unspeakable. If, if 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 a game is like twelve uh, hours, I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm finishing that. I may finish it, but it might take me six months. Uh, right. But for me to to put that much time into it, and that's just that version. That's not counting the time I put into the Steam version or the Switch version or anything yeah. like that. Well, on the Vita too, it was one of the. F- and one of the first games that yeah. did cross save too. Did cross save, which was yeah. wonderful. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I did a I, really good job with cross save too. Yeah. The, it was the nice and easy. Was good. Yeah. 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 It was not a difficult uh, thing to do to transfer your saves over. So. Transfer. Yeah. yeah I transferred all over that game. Hmm. So yeah. Love me some Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy. Yep. Well, my number two game is uh, one we've talked about a bit already, uh, and that is The Last of Us. Ah, um, darn right. Dog. Yeah, I mean, for all the all the things that Greg mentioned, uh, the fact that it came out in uh, 2013, and that was, you know, my daughter was two in 2013. Mm-hmm. Just uh, the story hit me at a, you know, on, on that level, on a parental level. And right. I spent the summer playing through that game and all the way to the end and just uh, absolutely love it. And um, they put the photo mode in that game too. Oh, I forgot screenshots. about that. Yep. And uh, I also love taking screenshots in video games. So I took a lot of screenshots in The Last <laughs> of Us as well and played around with filters and all that good stuff because uh, that's the type of player that I am. But uh, really enjoyed it all the way through. Um, I remember The Last of Us was the last game that I s- agreed to stand in a two-hour long line to play yep. the demo mm. of with oh, Greg. In fact, and CJ's best friend, Mike's best friend, Jim. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Mike was not in the line. He went mm. elsewhere. <laughs> CJ didn't know Mike then. I didn't know Mike. That's true. But uh, we stood in that line and we played it and... Uh, I had the unfortunate experience of being terrible at the demo mm. and, but I really like, I, I don't There's this thing where when you highly anticipate a game and then you play a demo at a show and you lose terrible at it or you're terrible yeah. at it. That's like, so demoralizing. <laughs> like, is it me or the game? Is the game bad? Like what is happening <laughs> here? And I generally don't like to play games that I'm like highly anticipating at a show anymore because of 
The Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Uh, I wish they had done a downloadable demo that I mm. played in the privacy of my own home, where I can but... suck and no one will know. <laughs> where yeah, I can exactly. be terrible and nobody's in the line watching. They look me into my terrible. window; they will know that I suck. <laughs> Uh, exactly stood in i'm standing in this line for two hours and this guy's playing this <laughs> let that guy up there but uh, uh but yeah i really enjoy the game it's my number two anyway i guess that means that it's time to go over the things that happened in 2019 oh real quick and then we'll okay. get to how that. will we remember that yeah. how how is it possible that we remember the things that happened only this year who could live at this speed? <laughs> I uh, ask myself that all the time. Uh, Nintendo announced the Metroid Prime 4 is rebooting the development. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. Mm. Apple uh, launching Apple Arcade. Of course, another subscription service kind of comes uh, into, into being. Well, we got Apex Legends uh, from Respawn. Mm -hmm. uh, shadow dropped really right mm -hmm. before yeah. EA launched Anthem. So uh, Anthem was not really getting that great press. Uh, they did like a public beta thing that wasn't really well received. And then, of course, Apex Legends comes out, which is a battle royale game, and everybody loved it. Hmm. So weird. Strange how that happens. Uh, Stadia got announced at uh, GDC. Yep. Uh, we had the Sonic movie leak and awful trailer yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it got fixed it got fixed yeah uh, bungie think? split or they parted ways with activision and sort of took control of their own destiny i get what you say did yeah uh, <laughs> we got super nintendo games on the switch via the nintendo switch mm, online we still don't have any new ones uh, oh yes we do we're getting we're getting no we got yeah this week as we record so we will have them when this hmm. goes live uh the ps4 has sold over 100 million units as of this year that's crazy so Ooh. your units yeah got the announcement of the panic play date no i can see and, you're all excited yeah uh we got a new switch per or we got a new switch uh hardware package with a better battery life and we also got the switch light announced portable only thing fortnite made headlines by going dark for like two whole days mm -hmm. with the uh black hole event and then of course uh the launch of chapter two uh we had still the alpha... not being a big fan of that game still can't get over how well they've Oh yeah, that game. I'm just in awe of what, yeah. <laughs> what that game has been able to do. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Even though I don't I don't play, I don't play no. Fortnite, but I'm I like what they <laughs> have going. Uh Amy mm -hmm. Hennig uh is opening a new studio with Skydance. Ooh. So we'll see uh -huh. how it goes. Uh we got Project X Cloud uh went into beta. And you can play games on it now on your Android Not cell phone telephone. Not in Canada yet, although they are expanding to Canada very soon. Mm if they haven't already and ninja you know that guy he went mixer exclusive from twitch he left yeah. okay <laughs> i can see there's a reason why we didn't talk about that on the show go ninja uh, go ninja go <laughs> we got announcements for the genesis mini and the turbo graphic 16 mini oh man can't and, wait for that turbo mini yeah and the playstation 5 got announced for real. Yep. They said PlayStation 5. A Sony executive said PlayStation 5. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, finally, Microsoft removed Cortana, their nope. voice assistant from the Xbox One. Not a part of the Xbox One anymore. Cortana okay. always sucked. The last sort of <sighs> bits of connect and voice control uh, not in there anymore. Yes. All right. And I, uh, I guess that means... That it's time for the number one game. Well, are are we doing another special guest? We were I waiting mean, I for you to. I was expecting somebody yeah. to interrupt me. Oh, I, I, thought, that, 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 I was oh, wondering when it was going to happen. Well, go, yeah, I was go, wondering go, when go, I was going to get interrupted. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, introduce introduce okay. level or uh, number one. Level one. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that's all that happened in 2019. So I guess that means it's time. Boom! Boom! Shout. 
Boom, what? boom, shout. <laughs> boom, boom, shout. <laughs> shout at the devil. <laughs> uh, how did you... How did you get in our Zoom call? Hello there. Well, I, how the hell did I get in? I think you mean what <laughs> That's to good, say. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, you jack and apes weren't going to do a, a top 20 games of all time as a 10. Special not, not a, it's only without no a uh, it's, it's 10 and it's decade Al the devil were you <laughs> we were we were trying to oh, planning on it but i guess oh you can't possible. keep me away my whorish young friends <laughs> i'm whorish. here well, yeah you're, you guys are kind of whorish right <laughs> sure. i mean look at what you're wearing green Green, Black. yes, the power, <laughs> the color of lust. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. So, I know you've had uh, some other uh, uh, guests coming on and and sharing their top five games of 2019, and I wanted to join in on the festival. You mean the decade? No, it's top five well. games of, of games the of the decade. decade. Yeah. Okay. decade. Best so, games. <laughs> let's go through my top ten most influential games no, it's, of all time. No. Wrong let's again. See. Now, okay, before <laughs> before <laughs> before we dive in. This is weirder with video. <laughs> before before I go into my top five, I know was one game that almost made my list but it ended up it ended up being my number six but i i would feel <laughs> remiss if i didn't mention it yeah i and this is this is the oldest game this is barely sneaking hmm. in under the decade counter okay oh, this game you sound a bit like a pirate devil i do <laughs> I'm Yar. gearing up. I be gearing up <laughs> Yar. for CJ's number barely one. made it I, under the wait, decade what? counter. But my number uh, runner-up. Let's say runner-up uh, from 2010 uh, was uh, Dante's Inferno, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're a little biased. I Well, that's why I didn't pick it, because I figured it was a little too, a little too on the nose for me uh -huh. or or perhaps a little too on on the on the junk <laughs> because <laughs> i don't know if you played that game i finished that game <laughs> well then you oh. certainly saw oh. bits of me it's seared into my brain <laughs> yikes yeah they the weren't old, little bits the old flippity flop dangling to and fro all 42 inches of my screen yeah, the power of PlayStation. The devil compels dog. you. The <laughs> devil repels dog you. Flies free. The power of PlayStation game. repels you. <laughs> My BLs of balls just out <laughs> saying, "How do you do?" <laughs> Did you like what you saw, Greg? No. Well, any other time you want to look, give me a call. Just, just okay. say my name three, three times. Like Beetlejuice? <laughs> no, he stole that from me. <laughs> he did. Uh, what? Read your Bible. It's, read your Bible. It's, it's in there. It's right, it's, right, it's right in there. It's Revelations. To, just say the devil three times. That's all I'm to do. How did that get in there? Who would have put that in there? It's, it's all about, you know, it's all about, yeah, I was an angel once. You remember that, right? That's my, that's sure. my, that's my, 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 my backstory. Your thing? Your my stick. tragic e origin. Every story needs a big bad. My no. tragic right. origin was I am the fallen angel. <laughs> and I'm the devil. So it worked out really well for me because I, here I am on the best show about video games on the internet. So... Thank you, uh, my easy ally friends. Now, <laughs> no, wrong show. Number five is Metal Gear Survive. <laughs> the best Metal Gear game. That's a very popular series. And of yeah. course, Survive finally brought microtransactions into the mix. 
Yeah. For everyone to enjoy. Really mixed up the formula. Everyone loved it. Yeah. I don't think uh, what's uh, that, isn't that an online game? Happen. That's of an course online it game is. Also. Yeah. Yes. What's, oh. what's your screen name there? The Devil Six Six Six. It wasn't taken. <laughs> How was that not taken? Well, it was. <laughs> But I killed the guy <laughs> and stole his password. And I didn't think a second thought about it because you're the devil. I am you're the, the devil. devil. Yes. I that's see. exactly why. Yeah. I don't I don't care. So <clears throat> yeah, the the original guy, he's in hell now. Not playing his Metal Gear Survive anymore. Do you make him watch you play it? Oh, that's a good idea. Greg. That's a damned <laughs> fine idea. You, 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 a, si- you, you sized me up when you said that. I watched you your might eyes. say that's a devil I, of an idea. I gotta say, I mean, if you ever are looking for work, you let me know. Say my name three <laughs> three times, as previously mentioned. And and uh, yeah, I could I could get you a job down there if you're if you're looking. If you're looking, I'll keep it in mind. Okay. Thanks, Devil. We we pay in brimstone though, so <laughs> it's I don't probably know. still worth more than the Canadian dollar. <laughs> oh, oh, oh <laughs> <a> zingo! <laughs> I love it. Uh, my number four game. Uh, yeah, I've been listening to to uh, this show so far because I have Devil powers, so I could listen even as you are recording Early. it. I know. Uh, uh, an old uh, crucified Jesus himself there mentioned <laughs> Dead Space 2 as one of his favorites. Funny you should mention that, CJ. Because Dead Space 3 is my number four game. Oh, no. Uh, it, no. Oh, yes, finally. <laughs> finally, they perfected the formula <laughs> that they were only suggesting in one and two. Mm. So, what uh, formula find, is that? Uh, the formula <laughs> of making Dead Space good. By adding microtransactions yeah. to your sixty dollar game, I'm sensing, I'm sensing a theme. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're going to be the producer on Dead Space Three Remastered oh, for Nintendo boy, Switch. Oh, I should be so lucky. <laughs> so there we go. There's my number four. Number <laughs> number three. It's a. I, I admit that I'm cheating on this one a bit, but okay. as the devil, I don't care. <laughs> the devil, the devil gets the devil to cheat because he's the devil. Uh, it's a it's a two way tie. Uh, Super cells, magnum opuses, clash of clans, and clash royale. <laughs> two. Yes. Hold on a second. <clears throat> oh man, it hurts mm. my throat to do this voice for so long. The two best mobile games ever made. <laughs> Clash of Clans yes. and Clash Royale. What, what makes them great? Well, what doesn't make them great? First of all, uh, very expensive to play for free-to-play mm. games. Yes. Uh, there yes. are microtransactions <sighs> up the wazoo, which, you know, I'm all in favor of. That's that's my thing. Second of all, uh, I, I love looking at the little icons on my... On my uh, on my iPhone's uh, home screen, because they got those screaming fellas on them. Can I? Yep. Can I say yep. I'm not at all surprised that the devil has an iPhone? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> the devil's not an Android guy. <laughs> I mean, that's where. That's I how you I had would, a razor phone. That's mm. how I would listen uh, with the Player One podcast iPhone application. All right. So you know, I, I I bought it over there for cheap. Ah, uh, but yeah, no, the, 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 the little icons of the, the fellows screaming. And if there's one thing I love, it's seeing uh, people's faces twisted in pain and torment uh, for all eternity. <laughs> so good job, Supercell. Keep it up, please. My number two game. Don't look at your watch, Greg. I'll keep you longer. <laughs> I can do this for ages. My number two game uh, was mentioned earlier in this show, uh, Journey, uh, by that game company. <laughs> what? That I don't know. Fit your did you guys, did you guys play? I don't know if you guys played Journey. I would, it's just, I mean, it's just, it's so well made. You know, it's just, yeah. uh, just atmospheric. 
you know, I, I, it's just that the, the world that it creates, I mean, the, the brilliant, beautiful uh, graphics, uh, it really transports you to this, mm. uh, this, this new uh, realm and just, yeah, sometimes I just, when I'm, I'm feeling a little stressed out, I'll just kick back and, and, and give Journey a quick replay. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really, ah, it's, it's really, just, it's, yeah. just, it's been beautiful. Yeah. yeah that, truly that, surprised. That, that game company, they do, uh, they do some really good work. You ever play Flower? Yeah, flowers beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. just, just, just great. Yeah, and they got no. that. Uh, they got that game Sky also. Uh, the, it's a yeah. mobile game that has microtransactions, so probably right up your alley. I, don't, I haven't played that one. Oh, okay. uh, that, 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 yeah, I'll give it a try, but I mean, I can't imagine a topic journey. Just, uh, just really well made. Just, just yeah, no, top notch, top notch. Uh, number one, you know. Yeah, a lot of a lot of talk about Star Wars these days. You got the Mandalorian on on the Disney Plus. You got the new uh, episode nine coming out. Uh, and and I I gotta say I really it's out by the time uh, this episode's out. Not yeah. now. I can't believe you corrected the devil. Yeah. Not now. <laughs> oh, I think oh, somebody okay. just I just summoned. I think now somebody got to wait a ticket somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we gotta. <laughs> We we have to wait like six months, and even then, it's a, a bootleg DVD uh, off some guy with a blanket on the sidewalk, uh, it's overdubbed it's, it, with bad cam, subtitling. Cam quarter, cam quarter, yeah. yeah, it's got like Taiwanese subtitles on it. Kaikaku means plan. Yeah. Mm. Oh, uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two. That's a good game. But, 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 before the changes. <laughs> what changes? Oh, what right. changes? When they, uh, before they took on all the the pay to win stuff. Oh, yeah, gotcha, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. gotcha. <laughs> yeah, talk about talk about having a winning formula and then just <laughs> deciding to to toss that right in the pooper. <clears throat> Snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Yeah, it was a, yeah. it was a shame because that game was was really well made, really well designed. Uh, but then then they maximize profits. To, and... Then they decided to ruin it. But you know what? I can uh, I can disconnect my ps4 from the internet and uh you know wiped out any updates and i can play it the way it was meant to be played ah pure yeah, yeah. Well, that's the kind of completely that's so... the kind of dark lord i am hmm. so so this has been <laughs> this has been great but i think we need to get on with with our show well yeah. to hell with all of you to hell with you <laughs> cj <laughs> why what what did i do Jesus. to hell with you greg <laughs> Well, you said I could have a job. And of oh. course, uh, to hell with Phil, who I has been strangely silent this whole time. He must bit. have, I think he had to. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> he's in taking a dump. No, a big, <laughs> uh, stinky dump. Uh, I can, from the pits of hell, I can smell it. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. the good thing he's not doing it down here because the flames would ignite the methane that oh. he's given off and yeah. cause a horrible explosion. So you don't want that. Very messy. <laughs> Thanks for having me here. The top twelve influential no. games of all time. The bestseller charts lit up with all these not, games. Not nope. And I will see you for episode six hundred sixty-six. We uh, no, we already did that. We did that. Nope. Yeah, we'll do another one later. We'll we'll talk. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks with for all of you. Bye. Satan devil devil the devil devil you satan call, you can just call me the devil it's fine. okay it's fine we're all friends here okay bye bye, bye. <laughs> hey guys i'm back from taking a shit what i miss oh. <laughs> oh, God. sorry and there's family I show probably, the I, family I, show I, it, 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 it 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 came on all of a sudden my tummy started rumbling right after number two I think it's uh, go that figure. Number two uh, talk. Uh, yeah, that's got good. The, got the works of brewing, so I figured I'd better step out. Uh, I didn't miss number one, did I? Not at all, because uh, now it's uh, time for number one. Number one. Numero uno. Uh, my number one, we have also spoken about in the previous episode, and that is Portal 2. Wow. <laughs> top, yep. top spot, huh? Top spot. Top spot. I mean, hot. I'm not going to argue it. Yeah, it was it was relatively low on my list. It, it was number yes. seven for me, yep. uh, but I certainly will not 
I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna portal shame you here. Cause it's no, uh, no. well. It's. I mean, Portal was such a. And you talked about it a little bit last episode, um, where you kind of discovered Portal because of CJ and I playing it. Right. And I think that CJ and I kind of discovered it the same way. In fact, I I think I remember talking to CJ about it when I first played it. I was living in North Carolina at the time, and we had all bought the orange box for yep. our 360s. <clears throat> so we wanted to play Half-Life 2 because none of us really had played Half-Life 2. Well, mm-hmm. I didn't do that, but... <laughs> well, and I, I rarely did play it after that, actually. But, but uh... then it's like playing, firing up Portal one night just to see what it was about because I really didn't know anything about it. <clears throat> and then not being able to put it down. Yeah. it's But it's a relatively short game. Yeah. Um, so Portal 2 felt like, like Portal felt like a, an idea Mm -hmm. that they fleshed out into a just long enough game. Um, and, and sort of left it that Portal 2 felt like a proper, it's like, okay, we know this idea works now. So we're really going to jump in with both feet. And, um, you know, and like you said before, Phil adding the gels to the situation really changed the gameplay as well. <clears throat> but it was the characters. I mean, GLaDOS was an amazing character. She carried the mm-hmm. entire first game. Uh, in this game, you got to learn about the origins of GLaDOS, which was fantastic. Yep. Um, you also got to work with GLaDOS, Stephen Merchant. Oh, yeah. As as uh, your little companion there who goes nuts. Yep. And, of course, J.K. Simmons. Yeah. yeah. I forgot to, I, I forgot to <laughs> mention him last episode. <clears throat> I mean, wow. Like, yeah. just every single thing that came out of his mouth in that game was gold yeah oh yeah which i mean to take a simmons it, it almost always is right but yeah like i mean when you're in sort of the the depths of um the research institute and you're listening to his voice recording rather than he sort of takes the place of glados for a large part of the game yeah uh where you're hearing voice recordings from him and they're just hilarious oh yeah like <laughs> and you know Oh, just such a great game. Such a great game. Um, and, and and yeah, like when I was when I was putting together this list, I took all what 50 games that yeah. were on my top fives yeah. through the decade and started to kind of, you know, dropped a few off the bottom, but there was never any question. Portal two was mm-hmm. right at the top right from the start. Mm-hmm. I yeah. didn't even have to think about it. It wasn't yep. a difficult decision mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. So yeah. It, oh, so good. I, I want to go back and play it again. Doing this has made me want to go back and play it again. <laughs> yeah, I've I've actually been wanting to when again going through making this list and kind of remembering that mm. Portal Two makes the the decade cutoff, and I was like, oh yeah, that's mm. that's definitely going to be on the list. Uh, I want to I want to go back and play those games with Finn now. Just yes, to, I mm-hmm. I feel the same way. My I really want my <clears throat> to introduce my kids to the first game as well. Yeah, um, I think they'll really get into it. Plus, I mean, it's it's there's some great puzzles in there, and it really requires oh, yeah, yeah. three dimensional thinking. So, yep, it's true. Yeah, no, I love uh, love the Portal series, and and two is is so Fantastic great. Fantastic game. Yeah, I'd love to see a proper sequel. Really is. Yeah. I really would do. Hmm. Um, I guess that's uh, time for my number one, uh, which uh, it's Last of Us. Yeah, I it, think is, it, right. is, it is Last of Us. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm going to cheat a little bit here and say uh, I'm I'm tossing in Left Behind as well. Uh, yeah, you're is, a big course, fan of that, weren't you? Which mm-hmm. uh, I it, Left Behind, of course, is the the DLC uh, that uh, involves uh, you know it's it's all focused on Ellie. Uh, takes place before uh, it, it's a prequel. Yeah. It involves Ellie and her friend uh, going around fighting clickers and uh, just hanging out in an abandoned mall. Mm-hmm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to spend most of my time talking about Left Behind uh, because we, mm-hmm. I mean, we've sure. obviously talked about Last of Us uh, on, on this episode uh, and last episode as well. I forget. Mm-hmm. I forget where they nope. all. No, we, I think we all have it in our top. They three. were all in our top. In our, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, Left Behind, I thought, did such a great job of just expanding Ellie's character, uh, really connecting you with her even even more. I mean, certainly, mm. uh, you know, you you were very strongly connected to her and and Joel from from Last of Us, but uh, getting that background of her 
uh, just, you know, uh, in this kind of post-apocalyptic environment, but also just trying to be a kid hanging out with her friend at the mall at the mall. And, you know, there's that, that great moment where you find uh, the functioning photo booth. Yeah. And, yep. and you post it to Facebook. Yeah. And it actually, it, it will, yeah. it will actually, you can connect it to your actual Facebook account and yeah, you can pick what poses you want the girls to do and it will post them. And that's wonderful. There's that uh, incredible scene where you're playing the arcade game mm -hmm. and it's it, it was like what a, a fighting game i believe and you're kind of giving instructions to your friend uh was riley was that her name i don't remember i i want to say it was riley um i might be misremembering but you know where you're you know you're kind of guiding her through the game uh or was she guiding you I, you know it's been a while I, I need to go back and play it but you know that that scene was just uh, so well done. Um, of course, it has my favorite line read uh, from any, <clears throat> perhaps any video game ever. Uh, and uh, we've I've, we've talked about this on the show before. The Skelisier bit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the whole extended sequence where you uh, find a Halloween store. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and and you're going around trying on masks and looking at all the different things. And there's a uh, it's like a magic eight ball uh, shaped like a skull and it's called Skelisier. And you can just have Ellie stand at this uh, little fortune teller toy for like five minutes straight, just a and she'll ask questions and uh, shake it and get the answer. And there's banter back and forth between uh, Ellie and her friend. Uh, and it, it ends with a final uh, line read. The, uh, the, the Skelisier can suck my dick. <laughs> and Ashley Johnson, who is uh, the voice actor for Ellie, uh, does such a spot on line read of it. And it cracks me up every single time. I actually went back uh, a couple days ago and watched that whole Skelisier scene and just lost it at the at that final uh, gag. Uh, and then it, again, at the end where you uh, you have that moment where they're where they're uh, <clears throat> dancing, Ellie and her friend are dancing and you get the uh, the kiss. Mm -hmm. where the kids I'm, I'm totally spoiling uh left behind left behind <clears throat> they came out five years ago so it did. catch up it did. Uh, but that moment is so emotionally charged and so touching and so sweet and so tragic uh yeah. because again spoiler alert her friend does not make it <laughs> there's a reason her friend ain't in last of us uh that is so good and so yeah. real and so just amazing and Holy crap! I love Last of Us. It, yeah, it, uh, it like that, and then Uncharted Four, kind of the same thing with uh, Nathan and his wife. Mm -hmm. Like they they've just done Naughty Dog has done such an amazing job of of writing not only characters but relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and I remember thinking when we when we were playing this DLC when it came out, thought really, I mean knowing much about it outside of what I might have observed or maybe, you know, nephews or nieces or, or remember when I was a teenager and some of the girls I knew, but thinking that they, you know, spot on got the relationship, even just a friendship relationship yeah, between the two characters. It's yeah. like they sound like teenage girls hanging oh, out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I now listening to you speak about this again, because I hadn't thought about it in quite a while. And I'm now at the point where I've got, she's not a teenager yet, but she's awfully close. Mm -hmm. and um knowing how and hearing how she interacts with her friends and going <laughs> and they're hanging out at the mall i kind of like to go back and play that again just to see yeah if i was right in thinking that they were <laughs> spot on but my memory of what it is and my <laughs> experience now right. makes me think that yeah. they really hit it and i want to say that at the time mike phillips uh, co-host mike phillips probably said something along those lines because i believe his at least one of his daughters yeah. was a teenager at the time so yeah yeah well the other thing too i think is both in left behind and in the last of us you know ellie has that joke book in the last of us oh yeah uh, oh right. where the, the stupid puns or whatever the stupid puns yeah, yeah. exactly so <laughs> in between you know while you're walking between areas and whatnot she'll tell you a joke or she'll ask you if you want to hear a joke and, uh, you know, those sort of moments of levity in a game that oh, is yeah. 
depressing as dark. hell. It's a, yeah. it's a heavy game. <laughs> it's a heavy game. Right. Yeah. It's important to storytelling. And I think that uh, <clears throat> is what makes The Last of Us a successful story is yeah. are those like little pieces that, you know, sometimes people forget about putting those in like or yeah. don't put the right moments of levity in right. and uh yeah they naughty dog just nailed it and i really hope that they have something similar i hope that you know last of us 2 sort of continues that i mean i i have every confidence that it will i'm sure that it will yeah, yeah. but yeah i hope i hope that it will i mean uncharted does the same thing like you know, you're in Nathan Drake's living room and playing Crash Bandicoot in yeah. Uncharted Well, that's what 4. I mean. I remember with <clears throat> Uncharted 4, I mean, the, the relationship that they wrote between those, between the husband yeah. and wife, yeah. right? It was just so perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you hope that uh, the sequel has the same sort of thing. I, I, I think it will. Yeah. So, CJ, <clears throat> let's just tell us your number one so we can get to the outro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh. sure that would make you happy, <laughs> Reg. Uh, no, please, but, uh, please, please be like, yeah. yeah, something just completely out of left field. Angry yeah. Birds, Star Wars. There you go. <laughs> Solid High, choice. Hyrule <laughs> Warriors. Please be Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> Hyrule Warriors. It is not Hyrule Warriors. No? It is not Angry Birds. It is Sea of Thieves. Oh, weird. Uh, rares. And that's our show for this week. Thanks for tuning Thank you for in. Uh, thanks for joining us this past <sighs> decade. Uh, we will see you next year, friends. Bye bye. So th this is a game, and I think uh, you know, I think the recent re uh, announcement of Everwild kind of falls in the same sort of category. When they announced Sea of Thieves at like E3 2014 <clears throat> or 15, there wasn't much to that trailer, and there were a lot of questions. And I think on this show, in fact, I reacted to the trailer being like where's the game <laughs> like what is the game like you showed me a pirate uh collecting treasure what is the what is the game loop what's the story and uh it took me until the game awards 2017 to kind of get it was it that and, the co-op trailer yeah the game awards yeah. 2017 they showed uh they announced the date and they also had a video up on the Rare YouTube channel um, showing about an hour of gameplay and what you do in the game. And what you do is you go out and have a pirate adventure with your friends or strangers. And uh, the idea that an online game can exist where you log on and don't know how things are going to go at all or who you're going to meet on the seas or uh, what's going to happen is what br has brought me back to this game time and time again, several times a week uh, over the last two years. And, mm. you know, Phil, you're talking about rogue legacy and, yeah. <laughs> you know, being a game where like sea of thieves, you load it up and you, you vaguely know what you're going to do in the game. You like, you know in Rogue Legacy what you're going to do. You know in Sea of Thieves you're going to be digging up chests and firing cannonballs at pirate ships. You don't know exactly how that's going to go, and you don't know whether you're going to be on the winning or losing end of that. And uh, the way that Rare has developed the game with the whole tools, not rules thing, where they add in a bunch of things that you can use and in you know multiple ways, there's a lot of sort of social engineering that goes on in the game too like against other crews like people can pretend to be friendly at first and then bamboozle you which happens a lot uh you know you don't see that in other video games and it really sort of expanded me, uh my idea of what can be achieved in a game under a game setting and uh you know i played a lot of the game i've definitely played over 2000 hours of the game at this point Jeez. which is a lot oh. <laughs> i don't think i've played any single video game that many hours um but you know part of it is that they've over That's the last three days years, by the way i know over the yeah That's your money's <laughs> worth that's my yeah. money's worth out of that over the last two years they've added things and uh you know added pets and add, added more things to do and they recently added fire which changes the game in a lot of uh interesting ways and uh the fact that microsoft 
let rare do that is is another like we're talking about minecraft you know it's yeah. it's great that they let mojang exist as its own thing and put it everywhere like uh you know some of the some of the decisions with sea of thieves you wouldn't think that a first party would just let <laughs> rare run off yeah. uh and do that <clears throat> and i do think that uh this is a game where you have to experience it it has to click with you for even <laughs> for you to even get uh, why I like it, and in much the same way, bringing it back to Rogue Legacy, Phil. Yeah, that don't. No, I, love it. Don't. I love how you're heading him off every time. I know. You can see him getting ready to say something, and <laughs> but Rogue Legacy, but Rogue Here's, Legacy. <clears throat> did you know that if you work a forty hour a week job mm. for a year, CJ yeah. doesn't have to worry about that. It's <laughs> wow. It's two thousand <laughs> two thousand eighty hours. The average yeah. person, assuming a forty hour work week works 2080 hours a year which is mm-hmm. equivalent to how much sea of thieves cj yeah, cj yeah. has worked for a older. year playing sea of thieves uh, yeah probably yeah and that's playing not only the retail version but rare has a uh sort of like ptr insider version that has upcoming oh. features that i've also oh. played a secret version for the elite a secret version for yep. the elite class warfare yeah that's what it is that i've also played uh a decent amount of oh my goodness (laughs) Uh, but anyway you know going into the next generation uh and just thinking about online games you know games like minecraft that let you play together with other people and you were talking about minecraft playing building things with your son and uh, you know, I've met a lot of people on the seas, <laughs> made a lot of friends on the seas. I love how CJ's game of the decade is being constantly qualified by, no, no, it's totally like the games it's you tough. like, fellas. It is. It is. <laughs> you can no, just but... like a game. You don't have to say it's like Rogue Legacy, because it's I not. Do. I do, I do <laughs> like a game. You're free to like whatever <laughs> games you want to like, CJ. Okay. <laughs> I really like this game. No matter how terrible they are. <sighs> You, well, you haven't played it in like two years either. <laughs> that is so. also true. <laughs> that is also true. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, you know, I met a lot of people, a lot of friends and, uh, you know, just folks on the internet that uh, that I never would have met were it not for Sea of Thieves. So there you go. Uh, there it is. The power of video games. There it is. Anyway, that's my number one. So that has concluded Woo! our Man. games of the decade extravaganza. We will see you in 2029 for our next game of the decade. Is that you a think? threat? <laughs> <laughs> and then the question is, who are you threatening exactly? Yeah, really. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> that is that Apparently. is bad news for everyone. Apparently. <clears throat> We'll yeah. be in our 50s. If we're doing this in 10 oh, years, we'll oh be in our 50s. Oh, oh. 50s. But I, w- I will so say, I will you, know say. That, you know that hair you're clinging on to? That's going to be gone. So old. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, you know, like looking back at the the lists of top fives that we did uh, over this decade and even coming up with this uh, list, like there are a lot of good years here. Like, yeah, <laughs> especially the platform transition and thinking about how analysts said that consoles were dead before PlayStation yeah. 4 and Xbox One and that didn't yeah. happen and console gaming continues to thrive and you know for a long while in the late 2000s people said the PC gaming was dead too and that kind of came back as well so yeah. uh kind of interesting to see just how everything has kind of turned out and uh you know for a good portion of this decade, people were saying Nintendo should just stop making hardware and uh, make mobile games. And while they did start making mobile games, I am glad that they continued making hardware. Yeah. uh, Because we got the Switch and that's a fantastic console. But also like looking at Microsoft and how they stumbled with the Xbox One, but I'd say quickly recovered. Uh, And I don't know all of the steps you know you look at phil spencer's uh you know becoming the head of xbox like what else changed underneath when don matrick left right. but it was certainly was a tone change 
<laughs> a dramatic shift in strategy once um, once Matrix was out. But I think um, you know early on Microsoft was successful with the 360. They had survived the Red Ring of Death, which was still happening to us in the early <laughs> part of this decade. Some episodes talked about how another host got another Red Ring. Um, mm. But just that uh, that that switch that happened with with Microsoft going down and uh, Sony coming up, like it uh, makes me think, like, what's going to happen in the next ten years? Like, what are we going to see? Like, uh, it felt coming up with this list, like some of the games that came out in 2010 and 2011. It felt like they were it so long ago. They were in a lot of ways <laughs> and that so much has happened uh since then just as a an industry and as a hobby like we were doing shows where we complained about the price of digital games when they were like 10 bucks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. the games. and that dlc was was bad and uh the online passes were bad and i think online passes were a bad a misstep but mm. I think we did get to a point where a lot of companies put out a lot of content on in online games for free to keep their audience uh, engaged with those games. And obviously Fortnite keeps making money. So hmm. uh, yeah, this has been an interesting decade in games to look back on in many hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. Cool. Agreed. You got nothing to add to that? <laughs> nope. <laughs> And with that, I guess we'll go. All right. <laughs> what, do you want me to talk about Sea of Thieves again? No. No? Okay. All righty. And that is our show for this week and to end the decade. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. If you have a question, comment. Uh, perhaps uh, you want to share your list of uh, top tens. Uh, yeah, tw tweet that to us at P1 Podcast on the Twitters. And uh, if you need our contact information, that's also at our internet website, playeronepodcast.com, <clears throat> where you will also find blog entries about Sega CD from Mr. Greg Seward. Maybe over the Christmas break, I, I did one. I don't remember. Mm. <laughs> Possible or Generation 16 episodes. I'm very excited about the next episode. And I'll share more information on that as I get closer to finishing it. Excellent. Uh, you will also find show notes and links to things that we talked about uh, in this episode, maybe, depending on how long I have to put together those show notes. Uh, but you will definitely find a link to our Discord server where you can discuss this episode and maybe share your games of the decade uh, and game of the year with us and our other listeners. Okay, I warn you guys, I did not have time since last week's show to sit <laughs> down and write out an outro. Let's see what we can do. If you'd like to subscribe to the Player One Podcast, you can do so by visiting playeronepodcast.com or by loading up the Apple Podcast application. Uh, we're also on many other podcast services uh, as well. Uh, you can uh, like us on Facebook. You can find us on Spotify, uh, Stitcher, Radio, uh, uh, and uh, uh, what else? Oh, we are we do our, our show live, live, live most weeks. Not this week, but most weeks on the YouTube's.com slash P1. <clears throat> yes, follow our Twitter account uh, at P1 Podcast uh, to find out when we will be broadcasting our next live show. Uh, and hey, if you like what you've heard, and how, how could you? How could you? Uh, you can head over to patreon.com slash p1 podcast throw a few shekels our way um i don't i don't i don't know man we've been <laughs> recording for a long time i got no i got i got yeah, no man. more i got no more no more gags uh but you know what i'll be sincere it's the last show of the decade i'll be sincere uh your your patreon funds uh really do help us uh keep the show uh, afloat we see no profit from it. We don't actually yep. uh, steal your money. Nope. I mean, CJ might, but we. But don't. Phil and I don't know about it. Yeah, he doesn't tell us. <laughs> I don't see the books. 
but it really does. We got this Zoom thing we're using that costs money. It helps out. It really does. Um, and certainly whenever we do uh, uh, like packs or things mm. like that, it, it it allows Greg to to come out to, to Washington for packs and things like that's that. Right. So yeah, it, right. it really does help. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? As a as a special treat, if you are a Patreon subscriber at the five dollar tier, cheap, you do gain access to a weekly uh, post show where uh, we play games, we have fun, we crack wise. It's great. It's great. It's a special uh, thanks to to all of you, uh, our our Patreon friends. Uh, so please join us for that. And um, Owen, if you have a couple bucks left over. Please do not hesitate to go to generation-16.com where you will find the Patreon link to help support Greg Seward's outstanding, and it is outstanding, web series about North America's favorite second banana, the Sega Genesis. Also cheap. You bet it is. Oh. But but of high quality. Mm-hmm. So there Definitely. you go. Uh, CJ. Yeah. Thanks for this. Uh, these past 10 years. Low these past 10 years well thank you thank you you. so much Uh, gregory you thank you for these past 10 years as well thank you phil and also i want to say thank you to uh everyone who contributed uh their top fives and top tens uh past guests and past hosts of the show thank you so much for doing that as well yeah it was great great hearing all of you again yeah so please don't be uh, a stranger one more thing I want to throw out there real quick. Yeah. This is the last episode of the year. I just want to again extend an extra big thank you to uh, everyone who mm-hmm. donated to Extra Life this year. Yeah. Uh, it was the most uh, successful year I've had so far um, as of this recording, which is actually still some time left to to donate. Um, it's a $10,573 raised. Wow. All right. 17 cents. So. Man. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah most successful year I've had in the nine years I've been doing it. So that's awesome. And as you're listening to this, the new uh, campaign for 2020 starts tomorrow. So nice. All right. Huh. Thank you again. There we go, man. That's fantastic, actually. Absolutely. So yeah, um, thanks again to everyone. We love all of you. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this stroll down memory lane. Uh, these past two episodes and uh, we hope to see you in 2020 that's right bye-bye everybody bye-bye happy new year